Ugh. Are you recording? We're recording. <laughs> now that no one has headphones, I can be as annoying as I want. Do you guys oh, think... That, I didn't realize that was stopping you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going Lisa. down, down, down. <laughs> Bitch. Do you think there are like... Like, do you think people buy like different styles of yarmulkes? Like, of like, do, do like kids have like a cars yarmulke? Oh, oh. <laughs> that would be nice. That we should get that. We should get into that merch market. Yeah, just yeah. Like ringtone yarmulkes. Yeah. For when your boy turns into a man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Amazing. Do you think you can make like a hexagonal yarmulke? I, I I feel like there has to be some sort of parameter. Like, yeah. can you imagine, like, there's just, like, this, like, you know, like, those, like, really cheap t-shirt sellers or whatever? Oh, yeah. Like, you know, who, like, screen print right there? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, get images online or whatever? Yeah, like, those, like, yeah just imagine that, like, on a yarmulke. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. That's let's, a good business let's model. Let's talk some, some bootleg yarmulkes. Let's do, it, let's do it, dude. I'm into that. That's an untapped market. Maybe we'll get someone to bless them. Like, is there a yarmulke store to go buy them from? Yeah, Jews are us. Oh, fuck. Let's, <laughs> let's cut that one out. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up with stuffing? Why is it called stuffing? Is it supposed to know. go in the bird? I think it's supposed to go in the bird. I, I think, think it's, it's yes. I think it's supposed to, like, help, like, flavor the white meat of the bird, mm -hmm. if I'm thinking correctly. And then the juices is supposed to, like, flavor the stuffing. But mm. so is that where the stuffing is cooked? No. Or is no. stuffing cooked separately and then if it's I'm just honest, like stuffed. I don't even know like what's in stuffing. Like what is stuffing? It's, it's like bread and celery and shit. Yeah, it's pretty That's much pretty just, much it. Yeah, it's like bread and celery and shit. I wonder yeah. I wonder if that was like really popular during the Great Depression. Probably. Because that seems like such like a simple like dish. I can't imagine a time when stuffing wasn't popular. It's really? so fucking good. I think it's okay. I'm no. Not, I, I, don't, I think I, it's okay, too. I don't, I, I, what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean, on, I'll on. eat it, but let, it's, let like, me, not let me, great. Let me, let, me, let me say this. <sighs> Swain, Swain, Swain. Hear me out, baby. Please. Okay? Don't, don't have a fit. Don't have a fit. It's okay. <laughs> Calm down. I'm, I'm, you guys, I'm Chris Pratt in it right now. Calm okay, down, Okay, yes. I... Calm down. <laughs> Come on, Blue. <laughs> uh, so, I would never make it for a potluck. I would, okay. I would never make it for a potluck. Even a Thanksgiving potluck? Even for a Thanksgiving okay. potluck. Like, I just personally wouldn't make it. Sure. Um, I wouldn't make it, like, on my off time. Sure. But I would eat it. I think it's good. If it's available, I will put it on my plate. Yeah. And right. I'll eat it up. Right. I uh, yeah. only need to eat it on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Are you of... Would you ever... If someone walked up to you in July with stuffing and said would you like some of this i'd eat it thank you it tastes the same maddie no it tastes the same in november you know, oh my in July. god but imagine how like it's just such a heavy hot dish it's not it's, that heavy it's like it's bread it's 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 it's, it's, <laughs> it's heavy it's heavy like because like, i feel like I, I feel like two scoops you're good it's like literally like mushy bread it's not mm, that heavy are you kidding? i'm shocked you uh, don't is, like that is that your like I, number one is that your staple swing are you like a stuffy man all all the way? I on Thanksgiving Day. If I make a plate on Thanksgiving, it has stuffing on it. Yeah. For firsts, for seconds. Yeah. I'm always putting more stuffing on my plate. Yeah, you like I've, to get stuffed. I love to get stuffed. <laughs> right. That's basically what it comes down to. Yeah. That's what, exactly. <laughs> and honestly, I would, I would eat it all year if I could if i had the energy to make it because really? I, I don't something make. isn't that hard to make it's you put it on the pot right that's true maddie make some july stuffing austin go for it fucking deal please literally put that on your calendar and then make it yeah i'm gonna put look it at, <laughs> enter look at into maddie, yeah. play this episode oh guess what i'm making right now maddie yeah. and so see fourth if I of want july any. goddamn stuffing <laughs> yeah <laughs> you want mushy bread and raisins on fourth of july guess the fuck what happy birthday america <laughs> yeah <laughs> raisins oh my God. need to be in stuffing more I there agree. weren't any raisins in any of the stuffing we ate i've yesterday. never had Raisins. Oh, it's so Fucking good. golden raisins? Oh, no, my God. Dude, yeah, raisins are the piece de resistance in a good stuffing dish. Well, what's your guys' like, number one to Thanksgiving food? Like, what's, like, your, like... You know mine. Yeah, you get stuffed. <laughs> stuffing, really? That's your number one? I guarantee... Yeah, I think yeah. so. Or pie. Sir, you're a cherry man, right? 
I think apple is probably my well, honestly, Apple's like shit. triple berry pie. Like, is a raspberry blackberry strawberry? You tardy bitch. I am a tardy bitch. Oh my god. Apple pie is the shit, especially with a little bit of ice cream. Oh my god. Maddie and I have mm-hmm. have over the last like couple of months gone through two apple pies and like three tubs of ice cream. Oh my god. We've just been living our best lives. I respect the shit out of that. <laughs> it's been great. See, I don't really like Thanksgiving that much. That's fair. Like, I don't really like I can take or leave basically mm-hmm. all of the Thanksgiving food. Mm-hmm. Uh, to all to all of our listeners, it's the day after Thanksgiving. It's Black Friday, and uh, and the real deal that we've all found together is dealing with each other. It's the friends <laughs> you find along the way. <laughs> uh, so if it's December and you're hearing our Thanksgiving conversation, deal with that. Deal with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I don't fucking cater to you. Yeah. <laughs> this is our show. We're gonna talk about stuffing as much as we want. <laughs> and getting stuffed yeah exactly yeah because as soon as you think it's out of style here comes room tone podcast to renaissance that shit mm-hmm. do you guys <laughs> take part in like the black friday festivities never have never have i did once and it was fine yeah but it's it's very weird how much it's died yeah like no stores like had that like crazy of sales no one yeah. Was like out and about doing shit or whatever. Or maybe I missed it. I don't fucking know. I mean, I feel like it's, it's mostly online sales. Now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's usually like at night. Like mm-hmm. the really good shit mm-hmm. happens like. Like Thursday night. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah totally. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid. Because we used to do this big family gathering for Thanksgiving. Um, there was like always a room set aside where like all of the housewives would like sit in a big circle and like be clipping coupons like oh fuck yeah. like all day wow. getting ready for Black Friday that night. That's cute. It was cute. Yeah. Um, yeah it that was, would be more fun than it is now. That's fair. Mm. But yeah, I mean, now it's just like you go online, you find it. I did Black Friday only once in like the Thursday night thing. And oh, that was yeah. in high school and I got some good deals. I was fucking killer. Hell yeah. But like I it was never like worth people getting as upset as they did. That's yeah. fair. During, like, <laughs> during that time. Like that's just too wild. Yeah. It's, it's not always worth been... doing. Yeah. yeah. So like now like I'll still like, you know, get in on the dealers or whatever, but like I'll it's mostly movies. I just buy movies. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I have one more question for you guys. Rock and Maddie, it. I'm going to need your expertise okay. on this. And maybe yours too, so I'm not sure how familiar you are. Thank you. If you guys were a tarot card, what would you be? You're right. I'm out of my depths. Yeah. Maddie, what, what, would, what would you label us as? Oh, shit. That's hard. I don't know. Mm. There's a lot. That's a really hard question. I'll be the <laughs> fool. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Actually, you're probably like the fucking um what is his name? The Hierophant? Is that oh yeah. yeah. What's the Hierophant? I'll find a description so I don't butcher it. Thank you. Austin, you can be the Empress. I feel like I would be the fool. You would be the hanged man. T- take that. <laughs> Kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. What's the hanged man? I'll also find you that. Okay, maybe you're not the Hierophant, actually. Get fucked, Swain. Yeah, yeah shit, dude. Or at least that one is very like spiritual sounding. Swain's kind of spiritual. Yeah, but that's not like your whole thing. He's always been warning me about Christianity and how I should join the the church. That's true. That's like all I talk about. <laughs> it's crazy. Dude loves the church. You look are you looking up tarot cards? Yeah, you're not the hero fan. You probably are the fool. And you're definitely the hanged man. It's like trying to like look at the best of the situation and trying to like take time to like reevaluate and plan mm-hmm. how to move forward in your life and like having a strong resilience to things that you can't control and stuff like that. Mm. That's, what That's I fair. Say. I like yeah. that. What's what's the fool? It just says a silly duck. (laughs) Just says a silly guy. (laughs) Just a silly little guy. That's what I like about it. The golden retriever of tarot cards. Pretty much. It's, yeah, like spontaneity, free spirit, like having an innocent mindset, like always seeing the best in people. Mm. I'll take it. Stuff like that. What about you? Are you deaf? Yeah, I'm probably the devil. <laughs> oh, the devil, yeah. I'm not death. Death is too nice. Yeah. Because death is all like changing your life for the better. That I'm not about that shit. Mm. 
Are you the wizard? I probably am the devil. <laughs> <laughs> What's the devil? Um, attachment and addiction issues, uh, sexuality, or like a driving force of sexuality, um, exploring dark thoughts, detachment from humanity. I like that for you. Huh. Yeah. That's pretty accurate. That's solid. Yeah. You're our like spooky little shadow friend. He, he's hearing my foot. It sounds like a fart. <laughs> <laughs> It represents being seduced by the material world and physical pleasures, also living in fear, domination, and bondage, being caged by an overabundance of luxury. Discretion should be used in personal and business matters. Hot damn. A solid lineup. No okay. kidding. Right. The fool, the hanged man, and the devil. Mm. <laughs> Went to a bar. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like the start of a good joke. <laughs> or the Bad start joke of- for my end. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, he doesn't get hanged until the end. No, 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 no. it's the hung man. He's he's hung. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) He's so humble. (laughs) That's fair. The hung man. I like that more. I don't really know what like the moon and sun are. Maybe you're like the sun too. I don't know. I'm so out of the sun of the hung man. I'm out of it. (laughs) I'm out of touch. Well, find out next week on. Room tone. Are we doing <laughs> the episode? No. What? We haven't we... done anything. Oh, I was like, oh. We have, I'm trying to start the episode. Yeah. Let's do intros. How do we pause for room tone? Just right there. Perfect. <laughs> 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 no, what I was going to say is, sounds like the start of a good joke or the start of a podcast. Pause for room tone. Love it. Perfect. Do it. Done. Did it. That was it. I think so. My name's Austin Swain. I'm an animator and video production specialist working in commercial advertising. Uh, Fun facts, uh, as we move into production conversations, uh, my fun fact for is uh, goes back to the set of Wizard of Oz. And uh, the reason I always advocate for LED lights versus uh what the business calls hot lights or like incandescent lights the set of wizard of oz was over 100 degrees almost every day my name is austin Lopez. i'm an amateur filmmaker and my movie slash tv show recommendation for the week is to kill a mockingbird ew what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's a good movie. I just bought it for myself. Really? Is like it a good movie? The, really? The, the original? Yes. Like, to yes. Kill a it's a, it's a very good movie. Interesting. I saw it once and I was unimpressed. You know what? I will say. I I, I feel like this is a very common reaction whenever I say this <laughs> because even in like when I was in high school and like we like read or we watched the movie mm-hmm. after we read the book. I'm like, one, it was a good book, so I don't get why everyone was complaining. And two, it was a good movie. Like I was like, guys, this is this is actually like this is good. This is fun. This is great. Hell yeah! Why are we complaining? Yeah. <laughs> I did not like the movie. Oh, I love the movie. And again, I think it's a great book. I think I, I think read the, the book. book. Is fine, yeah. I remember I like not Atticus. reading most of the books. I do like Atticus. Atticus is a cool name, so it already gets a lot of points from me. Mm-hmm. So hell yeah! Thanks for the rec. Yeah. Sorry, I shot it down so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a tough room, huh? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> no, it's all good. My name is Maddie, and I currently have a kitty licking their arm on my lap, which is cute. Swing, um, get off. Yeah, <laughs> a little kitty. Um, but I also am just getting into this Goncharov thing. Oh, yeah. So Goncharov, the movie I was talking to you about the other day, directed by Martin Scorsese. Yeah. That's not a movie. Apparently. Oh. It's a fictional movie. Oh my god, tell us more. That people are just have like made up and just everyone goes along with like pretending that they've seen it. It's so weird. It's like the cryptid of movies. Yeah, kind of. (laughs) Like basically one day someone was like made some post about like this film directed by Martin Scorsese, starring like Robert De Niro and Al Pacino and like a bunch of fucking people. And, like, made a movie poster of it and, like, put it out in the world and people, like, got obsessed with it. And then throughout the years, people have just, like, 
contributed to the lore of what this film is, yes. but it doesn't actually exist. I was thinking I'd never heard of this. Like, right. Yeah. That's so, like, amazing. people, like, make, like, fan art of it and shit, but it doesn't fucking exist. I wonder if that's also to, like, trip up, like, and and this might be douchey of, of us, like, movie lovers, but, like, I wonder if that's, like, to trip up, like, people who, like, say they watch, like, movie. Or, oh, right. Like, oh, this yeah. Is yeah. Du- yeah, this is such, like, a douchey way of saying this, but, you know, like, no, people I- who, who, like, you know, will, like, if you want to see if someone is actually, like, a movie buff like right. oh I watched this have you heard of this and hear their reaction to like yep. oh yeah I've seen that it's Robert De Niro uh, right Bernie. exactly you know? <laughs> and yeah I'm sure there's part of some of it is that oh yeah. my god that's hilarious but yeah it's very weird yeah Tumblr's what was the weird... plot what's the plot about it's like a mafia gangster movie set in Italy interesting yeah Classic which Scorsese. does sound like yeah it does sound like mm-hmm. Scorsese's wheelhouse totally um yeah I love it. Yeah, it's very, it's weird. Can we share like a link or something like that so people can find the lore? Oh, if you just look up Gontrov 1973. Yeah, like I'll be able to spell that. You'll find it. (laughs) Sorry that you're fucking illiterate. (laughs) Dude, me too. Gontrov. Gontrov. G O N C H A R O V. 1973. That was way more helpful than I expected. Yeah. <laughs> I can actually spell. I thought there was going to be a T in there. Yeah. No, it's a ch. <sighs> chica chica. So what are we doing here today? Making love, baby. Making love and making movies. Ew, my kitty is wet. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and making porn. <laughs> is that on this episode? <laughs> Yucky, why is my kitty wet? Uh, guys, I brought screenshots, not this. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I kind of romance myself. Like, it takes time. <laughs> <laughs> well, get I've ready. I've got romance myself. We're going. Ew. <laughs> yeah, I got to get a nice bottle of wine. I get some <laughs> Gotta masturbate, you know. <laughs> gotta, gotta, gotta lube up the bottle of wine. Gotta lube up the bottle. <laughs> True. Gotta lube up the candles. <laughs> yeah, dude. You just gotta got everything or a little bit slippery. <laughs> just in case. And it's ready for me. Yeah, for any sort of crevice you may desire. <laughs> this is the Room Tone Podcast, a show where we make a movie. Uh, we've been going through the stages of writing the script and uh, setting these uh, new ideas in motion. And today we thought we'd take a look at each of the scenes we have set up and uh, what might be some of the production needs. You know, what are some of the ideas that we have so far and what, you know, what are we going to have to bring together to make each of these scenes happen? Camera done. Yeah, gonna need a camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess like how deep down do we want to like go into this? How about if we just start from the like basics that we definitely need and we can go as far into it as we want? Well, yeah, I mean, we're going to need a camera. Yeah, we're what are, what camera. do we want to shoot this on? So, I don't know how much we want to go into this, but we Swain and I have been talking a little bit about like a potential sponsorship to use some equipment. And I think Swain and I have been talking about using the Black Magic Pocket yeah. Cinema. I mean, Black Magic makes a very solid camera for the consumer market. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it makes great footage and is very versatile. Very versatile and very tangible to use. Yeah. Like, I can't even imagine like what was it like red like file management or file like oh yeah restraints that we would have to like go yeah. upon yeah and i mean not that black magic shoots small i mean yeah. if we're shooting 4k on it it's still like a gig a minute yeah like it's a lot i mean you were gonna need you know some external hard drives to make this thing happen mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we're lucky enough to, you know, we work at a local TV station where we operate a Black Magic. Mm-hmm. And also, I mean, Black Magic has been known to sponsor creative projects. And so um, to be able to find someone who's willing to support this project um, and be able to use some equipment like that, I think I think could be killer. I agree. Black Magic makes a great camera and I think would be a great tool for us. On top of that, I mean, I think... In terms of a set, mm-hmm. um, you know, we've always kind of talked about finding someone who's who's already willing to let people into their home, like someone who has their house on Airbnb. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that would be a great place to start 
is, you know, finding a cool house that's on Airbnb and start talking to the owners about what we could make happen in there. Can I ask you what kind of set are you thinking about? Like what, I, I mean, I know a house, but like, say we could have our ideal house, right? Like what comes mm-hmm. to mind when you think the Brinkman's? That one I sent you or sent us. It was kind of like a tree house. Yeah, like, more like, of just like a house where something is definitely weird about yeah, it. Yeah. Like that one had like an empty pool in the basement and like weird old furniture that just like felt totally out of touch. Like God, the empty pool would be like great. <sighs> oh my I god. Know. Can you imagine Lonnie and David smoking in the empty pool? Totally. It's that yeah, that house is yeah, such that a that would be oh, sweet. God, that would be so fun. Um but yeah, I mean I I agree. Like something old and mm. big and weird yeah like something special something mm-hmm. that really stands out mm-hmm. yeah something that would be just interesting to look at i know we're kind of naming our criteria based off that but like would you say that like this is in like a residential area or is it more in like kind of like a wooded area out of nowhere like what what's going through your minds it would probably not be right in town yeah it would probably be on its own area on its own road yeah somewhere yeah. kind of like, like a that. country home yeah or just like five minutes outside of town type yeah. of thing you know yeah like, i don't think they would have a lot of neighbors for their cultly duties that's fair <laughs> that's fair i feel like on the boring end i like one of the first houses that comes to mind from film is the house from i'm thinking of ending things oh that's fair mm, yeah mm-hmm. which is it's just a nice it's a farmhouse, really, yeah. mm-hmm. but it's a nice, old, like, well-up-kept, but, mm-hmm. like, with a lot of character. Warm, but weird. Warm, yeah. but weird. Yeah, dude. Like, homey, but... Uh-oh. Uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I think the house, like, honestly, somewhere between, from, at least from, like, my current vision, somewhere mm-hmm. between I'm Thinking of Ending Things and Knives Out. Mm-hmm. I feel that. Like, those are just some really beautiful... Yeah, like the Knives Out house, but shrunken by 100%. Yeah, (laughs) because we are poor. Yeah. (laughs) And they are kind of poor. And they are not that rich. They are not that rich We we kind of talked about them being kind of like high middle class, or is Mm -hmm. it like middle middle class, like true middle? No, I'd say like upper middle. I'd say upper Upper middle. middle. Yeah, like they don't, like not every dinner is a black tie event, but like they can, they fill a table Mm -hmm. for their family gatherings. They live like they have money. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes, they're not That's afraid to like. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Whoop! There's our weekly Whoop! Hannibal reference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see that. I see that as well. Cool. I um, I'm very curious to see what we can find. Yeah, because we have already looked a little bit on Airbnb. Yeah, and yeah. and you know, once we start to really solidify the script, which um, you know, we have a little bit of time off for the holidays coming up, and we. Uh, you know, where you plan to be working a lot on the script. And so as we kind of get to those finishing touches of the script, we'll know a lot more what our needs are. And mm-hmm. yeah, it'll be really fun to start kind of browsing Airbnb a lot more seriously and seeing what we can start to line up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'd be cool. <clears throat> also, it's going to be very interesting to think like how long it's going to shoot. Like, I'm, I think that's like another thing I'm really excited for about the script being done is kind of having like an idea of like, we could shoot this in like, three days or we could shoot this in two days or whatever right yeah i don't know just like getting like those like very like concrete like ideas of like this will take us this long totally i think that's gonna be really fun totally okay so we need a house we need actors Mm -hmm. sure do and that's the one thing i'm kind of worried about yeah i'm not entirely sure you know we have people that we've worked with in the past Mm -hmm. um and so i mean i think that's a decent place to start as far as like would they work for these roles and maybe they won't maybe they will on top of that i think you know there are facebook groups for actors and filmmakers mm-hmm. where we could put out casting calls and yeah theater productions i've worked with stage actors in the past on a couple of projects and you know they're definitely enthusiastic actors fantastic that would be good that's another thing that'll be nice when we have like a concrete script mm-hmm. that we can even just send out a page yeah to you know, to attach to our casting call mm-hmm. and, you know, character descriptions, which we I, we definitely have character descriptions at this point. But, yeah. you know, all of these kind of concrete things that we can 
start to put out mm-hmm. and have casting calls and like auditions and things like that. And then do a table read. I, fuck yeah. I'm, yeah, so, I'm really excited, so excited for, that. for all that. A, a little bit more about the equipment. Um, you know, yeah, we need a camera. Yeah, we'll need a tripod, which I think we have those pretty set. Yeah. Um, or at least like a tripod. We have, we have tripods. Another thing that I've been really like curious to hear your guys' like thoughts on is like a legitimate dolly system. Like, like on like on tracks yeah you know we 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 talked about like these very like stylistic shots very symmetrical very the movement's very exact and concrete right and i feel like with a gimbal we can get that ish mm-hmm. but like with with like an actual like dolly like it would be we would have so much control and so much fluidity yeah i totally agree um yeah, for, for for the listeners, a gimbal is like a handheld stabilizer that, you know, it has that handheld feel, but it keeps mm-hmm. the camera stable. It's like a mechanized More, balance. Yeah. Um, and the dolly is you literally have the camera on a tripod and that tripod is on like a railroad track mm-hmm. on wheels. And, you know, it has this actual track that it slides back and forth on. Mm-hmm. And it's that's a huge like industry standard i mean so many yeah. shots in films that you see every day are are shot on a dolly track and you, they're, they're pretty affordable are they less than 500 dollars. <laughs> so for camera equipment affordable for camera equipment pretty yeah. affordable i was looking into them when we shot the music videos uh last year wow that would have been great i ended up building my own and it sucked mm. I, I did well for what it was it did all right yeah, I would totally be down to do that. I guess there's also like a level two that we should like really consider is that we sh- we need to be as cost effective as much as possible. Mm. And I agree. like, really, can we accomplish this, like these shots with like a slider uh, and like what, you know, like, can we can we mm-hmm. figure out to like not spend the money what would be the cheaper route? Yes. And I, I definitely think that's a conversation sooner once we have like the script. I think a really fun thing that we could probably do is Robert Rodriguez uh, wrote a book about how he like first got into Hollywood or whatever, or his like breakout directorial debut uh, where he only had like $5,000 in guerrilla filmmaking yep. to like work with. Yep. And so like, yeah, so he like wrote a book, and I think that would be like a fun thing for us to read to be like, okay, well, like let's, well, how did he do it? You know, yeah, like, heck yeah, mm-hmm. how did he fudge all the numbers? Yep. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we've been guerrilla filmmakers for the last five yeah. years. Like we we know how to go in with zero dollars and yeah. like make something happen. Yeah. And yeah, so I mean, taking that stance on it is like totally the vibe. But on top of that, it's like this project was also our chance to see kind of like okay, how can we take the skills that we've been honing over the last five mm-hmm. years and like make something truly professional and something that we're truly proud of? And so, yeah, yeah. kind of finding that middle ground. Yeah. Like how can we do something great for cheap? Yeah. Is, yeah, is going to be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I have dolly wheels. Mm-hmm. Like I have wheels that basically just attach to the bottom of a tripod. And so, you know, some tracking shots, you know, someone walking down a hallway, we could probably get a pretty solid follow, mm-hmm. um, you know, nice and smooth, mm-hmm. um, things like that. I will say on a cinematic standpoint uh, from the film, I think that I see the early shots as being, you know, like locked down on a tripod. The camera does not move because we're kind of in like a wide comedic shot of the Mm -hmm. character moving through the shot, Mm -hmm. you know, through the frame versus the other way around. Um, And I kind of see it transitioning more into like a handheld as things get a little spooky Mm -hmm. a little more violent a little unsure unsteady and uh yeah so it'll be kind of fun to like see the equipment change from the beginning of like tripods and dollies and sliders to like gimbals and handheld shoulder rigs Mm -hmm. and things like that towards the end of the film Mm -hmm. i like that i like that i think that'd be really fun cool implementing that and 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 yeah 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 we should also bring in cinnabars for the second half Ooh, i do like a aspect ratio shift yeah me too i'm a big fan of aspect ratio you know what's crazy and you guys i know maddie has already scoffed at me for this but we will be watching a movie and wow 
Yeah. <laughs> Crazy, right? Okay, you guys want to talk about lighting? Yeah. No, um, when I hardly ever notice an aspect ratio shift in a movie. Really? Yeah. I feel like never I think, it. I mean, and... I feel like I'm constantly noticing. I know. That's how I feel too. I, I think that I think that movies just really do their job with me where I'm like, I'm watching mm-hmm. the action yeah. and the things around the action that are supposed to be subliminally influencing the way that I feel about it mm-hmm. are being subliminal with me. That's nice. And yeah. So, 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 no, 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 that's not contradicting. I mean, like that that's nice. Like that's 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 great that that, that blends in so well. Yeah, it's, it's nice that you have that layer of like separation. I feel like I, I was constantly noticing, like everything, everywhere, all at once, constantly did right. it. Was like different aspect, different aspect, different aspect. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, God, this is not not distracting, but it's like, God, I, I I wonder like why they chose like these particular images. Yeah, and yeah, like, like I caught myself exhausting. wondering about that. That's fa- and I feel like I used to notice, yeah. like I used to watch films and like always be watching the edit and everything like that. And I don't know, maybe I've just gotten dumber, <laughs> where like I'm just like watching movies and just like watching them. I don't know, it's weird. Quit smoking pot, kid. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, stop enjoying <laughs> life so much. I'm losing brain cells. Yeah, I mean that's kind of cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean I think that'd be fun if it's like. 16 by 9, you know, your kind of classic full screen movie ratio. And then as we get into like the horror aspects, things are a little more action, a Mm -hmm. little more like, whoa, what's going on? We kind of bring in those black bars and we have that. What do they what do they call that? I mean, it's letterboxed, you know, it's it's a widescreen look. It's a more cinematic look. Maybe we should four by three it. This is so off topic. And I mean, for I mean, th- this is the conversation we're having. Yeah, I mean, like I get we could four by three it four and four by three. Then is like the more square. square it's it's a uh, it's it's an older aspect mm-hmm. ratio. You know, old cartoons, all like cameras back in like the film days. Most of them were four by three. Were two two tube TVs four by three? Tube TVs, yeah, they yeah. were four by three. So that it kind of brings in like an old fashioned feel. Mm-hmm. It makes it feel more like a home movie. Yeah, totally. So do you think like the opening is four by three? I would almost say the way ending, like during the ritual, is four by three. Yeah, oh, that's what I was thinking. You know? So it's like camcorder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh, that's fun. Like yeah. the fucking camera crew got kicked out. Now we're doing it handheld. Yeah. That's cool. I wouldn't say it's like exact, like, like it's not like a mockumentary or anything. No, it's not like, not like found like footage. I agree. Yeah. But just like, like I was kind of saying, like it's subtly mm-hmm. influencing the way that you feel about it. Mm-hmm. I think, I think when we like get towards like that, like scene when we're writing the script, I think we talk really long and hard about like what what are we trying mm-hmm. to do. You said long and hard. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we talk about like what we want, like 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 what what does the aspect ratio say within like the context of what's mm-hmm. happening? Yeah, and you we know? can't overdo it. Yeah, I mean it's a short film. Yeah, mm-hmm. so like if we do four different aspect ratios, they're only on screen for like two minutes each. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I feel like a lot of like the things that we're gonna have to do when we write the script is like really justify why we want to do things the way we want to do it. Um, and I know that's gonna take a lot of time and can be very frustrating at times but like i don't know i just like there's there's a certain level of charm that comes to it when you find out how much attention to detail like other films put into their work mm-hmm. you know totally. and it's almost like god like that's that's so minuscule and it's it's a thankless job but damn it is it nice yeah it's like i want to have that passion yeah you know well yeah. and here's the nice thing About all of that, I mean, we have learned over the last five years that to lead an effective production, Mm -hmm. you have to first have a solid plan. Yeah. And so, like, putting all of this thought in now is going to help us out so much on the actual day of shooting where Mm -hmm. we don't have to make these decisions on the spot. But really, the nice thing is, is we still have the ability to make those decisions on the spot. And so, like, all of the thoughtfulness that we see in movies have gone through the stages of writing the script shooting on Mm -hmm. set being in the editing room going through focus groups and like seeing what works and what doesn't Mm -hmm. and like 
those are all of the stages that we still get to go through and make all of these decisions in. Yeah. Not that we shouldn't think about them first, but it's cool that we have that wiggle room. I agree. Hell yeah. So what else do you guys think we need? Lights. Lights. We need lights. We're going to need lights. Rather than talk about like equipment, let's just mm-hmm. talk about like what we want the lighting to feel like and what are some of the needs that we think we would want. That's Soft. Fair. So... Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, well put, well put. Soft light, totally. I, I agree. I I think like soft and soft and like clearly motivate motivated light. Absolutely. So, what do you mean by motivated light for the S- listeners? So, motivated light is like where you see like a lamp in the background, or you see some sort of like chandelier or whatever, and that's kind of what you assume the light source is. Right. So you match your tones. Yeah. Your color tones with that like light source. And so to pop the bubble, it's never the actual thing that's lighting the subject. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, Yeah. When you see a lamp behind someone and you see a shine of light, that's the same color hitting their face. It's not the lamp that's doing that. They have another light doing that. (laughs) Which is why our game is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Stay tuned next week. Comedy is very flat. When yes. it comes to the lighting. Yes. So I think, and, and, and like horror is very dramatic. Dramatic. Yeah. Um, shadows, so a lot of shadows. I think it's really f- a fun idea, similar to what you were saying, Swain, about like the camera movements, mm-hmm. except for like the tone of light. Like, I think it'd be really fun for like the first half to be a bit flatter, you know? Yeah. A, uh, still soft, but a bit flatter. Less shadows. And then, like, they just start, like, peering in as the film goes on. Almost kind of like something menacing mm-hmm. is coming up from the brink and is brink man. Oh. <laughs> you know what I That's mean? That's why they called it that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thoughtfulness. <What's> so smart. <laughs> uh, so, you know, something like that. And, and again, like, just, like, I have been using the word gradient a lot when it comes to like explaining the tone shift of our film but i really do think we would need to like figure out a gradient of like that light transition yeah and it it kind of feels like from like morning or from like you know afternoon to night yeah totally Mm -hmm. and so like so what if this i mean to talk about motivated light you know there's lamps and chandeliers and things like that but there's also windows mm -hmm. so what if we plan to utilize windows a lot and so Early in the film when it's funny and it's lighthearted and they're getting ready for dinner. Mm -hmm. It's like afternoon and there's a lot of window light. And so everyone is very has this very kind of soft light on them. There's not a lot of shadows. Everything is kind of light and cheery. Mm -hmm. And then as the night as the day and the party progresses, the sun begins to go down and we start to lose those window lights. Now Mm -hmm. people are only lit by chandeliers and by lamps. And you have like a very shadowy kind of an atmosphere yeah what's gonna do can i can i tell you based off what you just said there a really fun like transition from like that flat to like dark yeah i think it'd be really fun if like um because i know we talked about uh zoe going off and doing like a task by herself and kind of finding some weird stuff and just like oh that's weird you Mm -hmm. know saying nothing about it i feel like it'd be really fun to do it like in like a like a farm-esque like country home Mm -hmm. and like the barn she goes inside the barn and like again you see like it's very flat on the outside but when you open in you see like just like beams of light Mm -hmm. that's like illuminating these very light shadows very like like various tones of shadows light and dark or whatever yeah and her entering the barn is almost symbolism of like you are now entering the She's shadows. walking into yeah. the darkness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the doors, like like the wind blows the doors closed or yeah. something like that. And then all of a sudden it's dark, except yes. for those little pockets of light. I love That'd that. I love that. And like, you know what? We can even make it trippy too, where like something's not right. Is like when she like walks out, it's a little bit, it's a lot darker. Yeah, right. Than like what she remembered. Mm-hmm. And like, that's kind of like her going like, weird yeah you get like that shot of her like actually noticing that it's dark yeah yeah that could be cool i feel like having like two establishing shots like and just like them like not not cutting uh one after the other but like one is establishing and then one is like ending yeah within that sequence you know so we cut back to it and it's like now this is a different scene yeah this is a different film even with like a little bit of time between like basically the same shot of the yeah. outside of the barn but with that little bit of time like the barn is nice and bright when she goes in and yeah. it's like a little bit darker and moodier yeah. when she comes out yeah i'm into that 
especially if she like gets lost in there and like gets kind of scared. Exactly. And so, like you kind of feel that like lost time. Yeah. I'm into that. That's and that's like the real shift. Yeah. Oh god, that's that. gonna be so fun. I almost if like the just to like throw spaghetti at the wall and see mm-hmm. what sticks. Um, I think it'd be fun because we're kind of going from like the comedy vibe of like if she walks into a place and she leaves the door open, so like there's still that light filtering through and like it feels nice or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then like Donnie's off like you know, trying to like do something and is like dragging a big heavy box or something like that. Yeah. And you like, we get the shot of him like bumping the door and like, oh, God damn it yeah. or whatever. But then we cut to the inside and you get that like classic horror trope of like she's inside and the door slams shut. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> so it's like, yeah. we know why. And yeah. it's like, oh, it's just Donnie being a goof. Yeah. But like she is like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trapped in here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it almost kind of like, like, I really like that idea because it almost like it kind of tricks the audience of like what's happening. Yeah. You know, cause it's like, Oh, it's a goof. Ha ha. Nothing bad's going to happen. Yeah. It's just going to be one big old misunderstanding. <laughs> and then it's like, no, 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 it's, it's not. not. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to hell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I don't know. Yeah. It, it might work. It might not, but I think it's, it's a fun transition. I think so too. I like that for lighting and, uh, gosh, it's going back to the barn. Sorry, really quick. I, it, it would be almost kind of an interesting image. I know we said we were doing the ceremony in the house and I still think that's the better move, but I feel like it'd be a interesting image to like show the barn one where it's like flat, uh, whatever comedy. And then two, we're seeing like a little bit more shadier, like, 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 uh, you know what I mean? A little bit more shadowy, like barn. Yeah. Yeah. And then we see like the barn illuminating from the inside for the ceremony for the ceremony mm-hmm. so yeah. it's almost like the, all the light went into the barn the oh, house yeah. becomes alive yeah. yeah i do totally you know i get some hereditary vibes from that I like do with too. the tree house i yeah. do too i'm not sure if that's like the right move because again i think maddie you brought up a really really good point last time we talked about the ceremony w- when we're like they already set up at the dinner table or like yeah. at like whatever why would they have a second location yeah maybe they yeah. have dinner in the barn yeah that's that's true Mm, uh, that's very true yeah i mean maybe i think it's a vibe yeah. um and even if it's like not perfect i mean maybe the house mm-hmm. just kind of feels like that you know i think a lot of this too will land on the location we find i have a family friend who is really uh relaxed and letting us use their like space and location but like say we wanted to use their barn we could make it i like the idea of like making it like 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 stringing up lights or whatever make it like really like festive yeah almost kind of like this is definitely not a dangerous place this is like this is such a fun little mm-hmm. time yeah yeah just if a you, thought if you're going into our youtube channel to look at our old short films um the film that us three worked on together shatter was shot in that barn and i mean we were able to make it feel pretty spooky yeah yeah I definitely, I definitely think that's like a good option to like keep in mind. Totally. And again, I, I, the only reason why I bring them up is just cost efficiency. Totally. I mean, good friends are good to have. Mm-hmm. What else? <laughs> what else do we need? We talked audio a little bit about should... audio. Yeah. I will say audio, what concerns me is my lack of thought on it yeah and here's the thing you guys i mean Mm. you can have a good camera and you can have a good script and you can have good actors um but if you have bad lighting if it's not interesting to look at it's gonna fall flat and if you have bad audio if it's hard to listen to no it's not it's unwatchable yeah so i mean lighting and audio truly are like the unsung heroes of video production Mm -hmm. um time and time again you you've seen an indie film just like get just i mean you just it's unwatchable yeah i mean like what like in our video production class and college uh if the audio was terrible our professor would just turn it off he would mm-hmm. yeah he told, in he's front like, of everybody i'm not watching we're not watching this yeah. you did a bad job yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like like it's it's definitely like a pro- proven thing yeah and like i i agreed every time they paused mm-hmm. it so i would make the argument just like on a production level for audio um I think we I, I've always loved working with a boom. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you've seen it I am in behind the scenes. It's the guy with the stick and the big fuzzy thing, which fun fact is called a dead cat mm-hmm. is the big the big fuzzy thing at the end of the <laughs> stick. Um, I think that it captures great audio and it means that you don't have an audio source in the frame. Like if you have a lav mic, which I mean, for a short film, we never would. I 
it's man lately with like the boom and i don't know if like this is like us at work not doing a good job or what yeah i've been working with the boom a little bit at work yeah and i feel like i get subpar audio at best i don't know if like the circumstances have just been very crappy yeah um or what but like every time i feel like i'm taking a big risk when i take when i do the boom i agree there's definitely a trick to it and we are fairly unpracticed with like that particular equipment Mm -hmm. um one of my favorite so i agree it would 100 percent take some practice before we're ready to take it out um but one of my favorite parts about using the boom is like it also captures a little bit of like what's happening in the room Mm -hmm. so like if someone if they're sitting at the dinner table and like someone goes in like is moving around the forks and things like that. Like you actually hear that audio from like a high quality microphone. Yeah. And that's nice. Mm-hmm. It's nice to at least just kind of have that. Mm-hmm. I would also make the, make the argument for doing like a body mic. Yeah. And so I think, I think you basically have like a small lavalier microphone um, that people would usually use for interviews. But instead of like clipping it to the shirt, you would tape it to the chest and have it underneath the shirt. Um, and I think that would be good to have just as like a backup audio source in, in case if the boom doesn't capture the right quality. Um, I think that'd be good. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, I mean, Foley work has all, honestly always been a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, challenging, though. Challenging, yes. But I think really elevates the production. For those who don't know, I mean... Foley is defined as the audio that accompanies the character action. So it's like if someone is walking and they're picking something up off the counter and they're setting it down, like it's all of those sounds of like the footprints and the keys on the table and the plate sliding across (laughs) and the pudding pops and (laughs) And the pudding, (laughs) which like, I mean, you don't get that audio really on set almost every time it's recorded after the fact Mm -hmm. and like brought in and made to sound right and so i think that's that's also going to be a good way to make sure that the film feels in it's a way to f- make it feel real i agree well i have to say i'm feeling pretty like satisfied with like our conversation i feel like we have a pretty good overview of kind of what's going to be our topics for the upcoming year and yeah uh kind of an idea of like what we need to start thinking about as a group totally uh when it comes to getting prepared for the production of the short yeah these are the things that we're gonna have to start lining up once we kind of have this plan in motion for what the what the actual story is Mm -hmm. yeah and it's i mean this is this is the fun part i think yeah i agree making it happen yeah Mm -hmm totally i'm excited yeah so this is this is our one of our last episodes before uh room tone goes on holiday second to last yes mm-hmm. one of our last i was just yes yeah, se- yeah second to last no, it's fine <laughs> no. no it's fucking fine all right <laughs> <laughs> uh next week we will we will be doing another sort of mini episode as as we've been uh but this won't be a uh, movie review we mm-hmm. will be kind of continuing this conversation of production and uh, playing a little game. So stay tuned for that. That'll be our last episode before we go on break. And we'll be back on January 25th. Until then. Keep room in your butt for our tone. <laughs> Pause for room tone. Room tone.